Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly on Your Music Live. I think you can probably get a feel for the sort of music we're going to be creating here today. Yeah. Are you ready to get jazzed? <laughs> I am. Uh, welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, this is our weekly show all about garage band and garage band related stuff. And uh, this week, as we've been doing for the last three weeks, we'll be creating a song of a particular genre. This time, it is going to be jazz because we put it to the vote, you see. We uh, took a vote. We took a poll over on the community tab. If you don't know how to get there, jump over to the Studio Live Today YouTube channel. Tap on the community tab there and uh, you'll get something like this, which is the genre. And as you can see... Um, I was a bit disappointed. Industrial and Scar really didn't fo f uh, focus in too well there. Emo Goth, uh, Synth or New Wave, but Jazz. Everyone wanted to see a little bit of, a little bit of Jazz. They want to see a swing here this week. So uh, that's what we're going to be creating. Nothing like what I was just playing in the intro there. That was just for a bit of fun. But um, we're going to jump into GarageBand in just a few moments and uh, start creating a jazz song. If you're watching on the replay, just uh, check the timestamp down in the description. That will tell you when we actually start creating because we want to say g'day to a few folks who are here live on the show. Hello to Tommy Jack Music. Hello to Jade Starlet and Mark Bro. Uh, hello to Princess LDG who's cooking. Well, I'll be cooking too in the kitchen. Fat Panda Cat is hoping for a Pete Johns does Ramstein kind of show. Well, maybe. Maybe, uh, w w what would you call Ramstein? I don't know. Yeah, Pete Brubeck. I need, we need some, uh, we need some like five, four time stuff, don't we? Like seven, eight time and 11, eight and just all over the top. Maybe not. Hello, Joe and Barry Glenn. Hello, still Illa. Still Illa is the illest. Is that like Biggie Small was the Ill No. All right, let's, um, uh, before I get started, just a quick update on a few things. Uh, iPad OS 16 is due to drop like any day now, any minute. You should get it close to being available on your iPad devices. So this is the update that brings things like the the new... I can't remember what it's called now because I'm so excited about it. That's how excited I am. What's the screen thing called? <laughs> the uh, dock, the screen flow... Uh, yeah, multitasking thing. You can, you can tell I'm very excited about it. Um, I don't get it anyway because I have an older iPad, so it's not going to be a problem. And uh, the one thing that I was excited about that may have made me go out and get myself a new M1 or M2 iPad Pro is the external screen support. And guess what? Drum roll, please. Uh, that's been delayed till later in the year. So, yeah, the one thing that I was like, yes, I cannot wait for, for external screen support. Uh, yeah, it's not coming just yet. So, that, and that's, by the way, obviously there is external screen support in that, uh, as you would have seen in the intro there, I can share my iPad screen, but this was going to allow us to have one thing on the iPad screen and then one thing up on another screen, which for someone like me who uses HDMI output, and yeah, it would be handy, but uh, alas, we don't have it. So we'll see how we go there. Oh, there you go. Mark says, already dropped. Uh, Jay's going to update in December. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i on the fence at the moment. I, I need to see more. I need to see more proof. I'm going to be watching carefully all the folks who are updating and finding out if I need to bother because I, I can't see a compelling reason. Uh, if I had an iPad Pro like second gen or third gen, yeah, I could probably see a reason. Uh, but I got the 2020 model anyway, and this thing flies along. Like I've, I don't ever hit a point where I'm like, I can't do what I need to do on my iPad. So I don't, I don't see myself updating this sucker. But I do, I do also want to consider going to the 12.9 inch. So maybe that could be the thing that pushes me over the edge. But I, um, I spec'd out a brand new iPad, 12.9 inch with one terabyte of storage, so that I could get the uh, the full eight, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and um, it was four thousand dollars australian and that was with like a magic keyboard and the pencil and the everything so four thousand dollars for an ipad I, it would never leave the house i would never take it anywhere because it would be too uh it would be too risky i don't want to do it um by the way if you do have any questions uh, you can do this just ask questions by putting the word question or a big fatty old Q in front of your comment and we'll be able to answer any questions that you have as we go through. Uh, questions like this one, does anyone use Aurea Pro and how different is it compared to Cubase's 3? Is the audio editing better in Aurea Pro? I've explored all three and uh, we've got videos all over this channel so uh, just search my name, Pete John's Aurea or Pete John's Cubase's because we've, uh, we've covered this. I came back to GarageBand because I found 
the extra features you had in Aurea Pro and Cubasis didn't account for the additional effort that it took me to get things done. I find GarageBand for my workflow is more intuitive and it works for me. Other folks, if you want more things, if you want the ability to have more tracks, more effects, effects processing, automation of effects, a whole bunch of other things, Cubasis and Aurea are pretty darn cool. So worth worth checking out. But uh, the one video I did, it was about an hour and it was like comparing the three, the, the difference between all three. Uh, if you, you want to find it, just search. Uh, if we go Pete John's Aurea over on the YouTube, which is a, a good tip, by the way. If you want to find out all the videos, there you go. So there's my first look at Aurea Pro. Uh, there's my verdict about Aurea Pro. So we did a couple of videos on that. And then I did this one, GB versus Aurea versus Cubasis. So nearly an hour of me ranting and raving about the difference between the three. And uh, yeah, if you want to find out about it, then uh, you'll get all the info you need. Should we crack on? Should we should we create some jazz? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to jump over here onto my onto onto my iPad and uh, take a look. So we're going to create ourselves a new song, create song, and we are going to select uh, our first track. Now, what I normally do when I'm creating a new genre uh, is to come in here. I'm just going to add an audio recorder track. Check out what loops and sounds GarageBand has in here because I want to make this simple. And even if you don't, if you can't play any jazz guitar or jazz flute or jazz anything, uh, you can usually find yourself some cool loops and samples and then use the auto drummer and then use some keys. And you, you can create your own stuff here without too much effort. So if we come in here, we can hit the loop button here and you can see here, I've already filtered by some sound packs. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to go all sound packs, filter by everything. And what I'm going to do, is I'm going to type in the word jazz, and let's just see what jazz stuff we have here in GarageBand. There's all our jazz. <laughs> so we've got uh, we've got these ones. We've got the new jazz jam guitar that sounds like this. <clears throat> and this one. So they're pretty cool. You would have heard them if you've heard someone making garage band because a lot of people look for cool jazzy j sounding tunes in garage band. So the one that you would have heard if you've heard anyone produce anything in garage band ever, you have heard this sound. Or a variation thereof. I've used them everyone's used them. And there's also the guitar that goes along with that jazz hustle. Yeah. All right. And some sax. Oh, excuse me. That first sound uh, was a bit weird. So, am I going to use any of these in this track? No, because they've been done. I've, I've used them before. I've used them in demonstrations years and years ago. Uh, they're a bit played out. So I'm going to try and find something a bit new. Now, you can try other words in here. So if we wanted to see, let's see if there's something that's like swing or something like that. Uh, so what have we got? Like, uh, yeah, that's nothing to do with it. Um, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so that's in this Mark Letary pack. So Mark Letary has a bunch of cool guitar stuff that could be kind of jazzy, but it's a little bit more funk than jazz. We got the swing and sign keys. Not bad again. Uh, what's this one? Tight swing beat. Yeah, so there's some options that we have in there. What I'm going to do with this one, though, is that there is a pack in here. There is a pack in GarageBand. They call the watch the sound. So if we go to sound packs here and we go, instead of all sound packs, we come down and we select the watch the sound. This is the one that Mark Ronson put together for the Apple TV show of the same name called Watch the Sound. And if you've got Apple TV and if you've bought any Apple devices in the last 12 months, you probably have at least had a trial of Apple TV for a year. So if you've got Apple TV, go and watch. It's really interesting. They talk about auto-tune. They talk about reverb. They talk about all the different things uh, in a more sort of high-level way, but it gives you some good basic understanding. Anyway, uh, so this is the Mark Ronson pack. And if we come back out here, here are all of the things that we have in here. And uh, the cool thing is that there's some kind of jazzy kind of loops in here. So... So that's all the soul, a little bit more of a soul sound. We've got like some big funk stuff in here. 
little bit too kind of funky there. But there's one when I was uh, when I was realizing that we were probably going to be doing something in the jazz genre. Uh, I actually found this loop that I thought we could build something around, which we're going to use today. It sounds like this. <laughs> So this is what we're going to use for this one. Now, you can see here, we've got Diamond Jubilee and we've got a whole bunch of different stuff. So you can use just the strings here, little tremolo string. There's the melody, which is on a nice violin. The rhythmless parts, which are just the backing. And then the whole mix there, as well as the keys. So we're probably going to do something a bit jazz fusion-y, almost into lo-fi. Is that cheating? Maybe. We'll find out. But we're going to go with it anyway. So when we're using a loop, all we need to do, once we've previewed it, let's bring in this rhythmless one, and we'll just drop it onto a brand new track. And uh, what I'll do, just so we can play around with this for a bit, is I'm just going to duplicate out like uh, four sections of the same thing. So I'm just going to go into the sections, which you hit the plus button there, and jump into the sections and you can duplicate using the duplicate button. You can then hit all sections and you'll get a view of all of the sections. And now we have it ready to go. Now, because I want this to be a bit more upbeat and peppy, I don't want it to be super lo-fi. I need it a bit faster, don't we? So let's come in here to the tempo and change that up. So I want it to be like, do, 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 do. I want it to be maybe around 140, so it's going to do a bit of this. Let's go with that. The other thing I always recommend, when you are using loops or samples or other people's stuff, change it up. So if you use the default C major, you can almost guarantee that someone else has used the default C major before. So what do I do? I make sure that I use a different key. And my favorite key to play in is G. So we're gonna drop this one down to G and see what this sounds like in G. All right, we're gonna go with that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go with that. Um, so that's gonna be the base, but remember, we can build around this and then we can even remove this later if we want to. So we can just use this to kind of build something out and then change it up if we want to. Uh, hello to other folks who've joined us. Hello to uh, the Raveling Bungalow Arch. Yes, Jazz did win indeed. Uh, by the way, Jade Star also has a series about Aurea. Or Jade, Jade's the Aurea Queen. Um, Jamie Malander for Cubases 3. Jade Star for Aurea Pro. Me or Patrick from the Garage Band Guide if you want to learn more Garage Band stuff. So you're covered. However, however, whatever, however you want to create, you're covered. Uh, Phil says we had a guy who would play flute like that on the street in... Uh, in KC, Kansas City. Haven't seen him in a while though. There is a dude here in Adelaide who's like this big biker looking dude. Bike, biker? Yeah, bikey. Uh, like big Harley Davidson riding looking dude. Like, you know, you know the type. Big guy with the hat and sunglasses and the big giant beard and like walks up and then he grabs his little flute case and he pulls it out and just plays the most magnificent flute. And uh, every time I see him, I always donate when he's out on the street because it's just the funniest thing. Like, I just love people walking up and they look at this, they hear this flute music and they can't put two and two together that this bloke is the guy playing the flute. But um, yeah, he plays some very cool flute. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, hello Josh, by the way, as well. Let's um, uh, start building this out. So the cool thing is, like we could just come in here and start using all the other same ones, these Diamond Jubilee ones. We could just use all them to build it out, but that's gonna be boring, right? It's gonna all sound the same, and we don't want it to do that. So. I'm going to add in some drums. Now, we've got brush drummers in GarageBand now, finally. So I'm going to show you a cool little trick that we can use to get a drummer track that's going to sit beautifully with this loop straight away. So I'm going to go to the drummer. We're going to go acoustic. We're going to say, Kyle, your half pipe is not needed here because Kyle would sound like this. Sorry, Kyle. You're out of the band. Oh, poor Kyle. The amount of people that fire Kyle well, as soon as they start a track. Pretty funny. All right, but we are going to scroll down here and we're going to try uh, these brush drummers. So we've got a retro brush drummer in Austin. We've got a pop brush drummer in Tyre Tyrell. Tyrell? Tyrell. Uh, we're going to go with Austin to start with. And uh, we're going to see what Austin's got going on here. Now, we don't want 
it to be super complex. We want it to be a kind of simple. So we'll drop that slider down straight away. And let's just take a listen to this uh, straight out of the back. Not good at all. For starters, I want, it, it's jazz. You've got to be up on the ride, don't you? You've got to be up on the cymbals for some jazz. So let's stick him up on the cymbals by changing this from hi-hat to our cymbals. Now, is that fitting in with our track at all? No, but guess what? You know what button we have? We have the magic button down here called follow. We used it last week. It's a cheat, it's a hack, but it's awesome. So we're gonna tap the follow button, and here in the follow section, we're gonna follow this, the uh, the track that we've added in there, which is, which one is it? Is it the other instrument? What is it called? Let's give it a name. It is the other instrument. <laughs> but we'll call this, what we'll do, we'll rename this just so that we know. So we'll just call this the, uh, the bass loop, because that's what we're going to use to build this track around. So our bass loop there, and then when we come back to our drummer track here, we can come in here. Oh yes, bad example, Ron Burgundy is a legendary jazz flautist. He has many leather-bound books. <laughs> He's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Love it. G'day, Timothy. Hope you're doing well. We're having some fun here today, because music should be fun. Need I say it again? All right, so we'll use this bass loop, and that will set the follow to this loop. Let's see how well it does. Not, not bad, right? Uh, let's just change up the symbol, see if it... Yeah, maybe. Let's just uh, switch out Austin and let's try this other drummer. Let's try this uh, pop brush drummer because I think the pop brush kit is a little bit more subtle. So we'll do the same sort of thing here. The follow is still on there. So let's take a listen to what Tyrell's going to do with this. Let's go back to his hi-hat. So I think we're in the ballpark there, aren't we? So that's the kind of thing we want. Maybe we just make it a little bit more complex. And I think we leave it on the uh, on the ride symbol there. No, it needs to be simple. Yeah, that, that's better. All right, so we'll use that as our base. We'll get rid of these other ones because they're just our, um, we'll just drag and hold and slide across there. Hit that button there. I always forget that if you're deleting drummer bits, you don't have to actually delete and then tap it and then go delete. It gives you the little trash can right there, which is cool. So we'll use this one. We'll loop it out just to go the rest of the way for now. We can change it, split it, do what we want with it. But for a bit of a basic beat for these 32 bars... <laughs> Add the fills a little bit more there. I like it. I think we've got ourselves a little bit of a bass here for something. Speaking of bass, I think when you're doing some uh, jazz, you've got to have some upright bass, don't you? So uh, let's add in some bass. So we're going to hit the blow spot in here. I'm not going to use the bass guitar this week. We're going to go to the GarageBand bass. And GarageBand has a very cool upright bass. If you tap on more sounds here... Uh, it's actually kind of hidden because you've got your four electronic and your four acoustic basses there. But if you slide across to the right, we uh, hit on that one and we are good to go. Uh, do, do, are you in 4-4? Four, four? I am in 4-4, four, four, I believe. <laughs> I believe I'm in 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. So I'm in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, so we're going to continue on this. Uh, I've heard these leaps before. Nice that they're in a different uh, key other than A minor. Yeah, maybe we could try it to, uh, maybe we, well, see, the problem is if we go to a, if we go to non 4-4 four, four time, uh, it's probably going to ruin our loop. Let's find out. Let's experiment. And then we'll do our upright bass. Because I reckon uh, if you do, if we change this to 6-8 time, we'll see what it does to the, uh, the loop we've got there. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> four four isn't very jazz. Oh no. Yeah, do 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 do. Go five four. No, we'll stick it. We'll stay with that four four because I think we can do some cool stuff with this. We'll go back to our our base and go to our notes. Uh, 
All right, let's um. Now we could, of course. Okay, so I'm cheating here because I'm using a MIDI keyboard, but if you wanted to just use this, you could do it a bit like this. So I think that's the kind of bass groove that I think we want here. All right, let's try something like this. Yeah, we're, we're probably genre hopping a little bit here, but that's okay. You start with an idea and then you, you workshop it, you work around it, so I don't think it actually is going to matter too much. All right, let's... Uh... <laughs> Alright, let's uh, adjust that first note because it's not lining up with the bits and pieces. Do, do, do. Alright, there we go. So that's the spot that we wanted to start. We'll just delete those out. And we'll line it back up to here. Do, do, do. Yeah, see, that's the problem. When you are slightly, if you're ever having this problem, when you're slightly early on a note, See how it's actually cutting off? If you cut it to there, it removes the note. So uh, if you're trying to do like a loop kind of thing like this, this is the sort of thing that you need to do. You need to zoom all the way in and then just find the start of that first note and usually just plonk it like that and adjust it to there. And it should now, when we trim it, with any luck, keep that note. There you go. So now we're going to use that as our basic loop there. So that's what we're going to use as our basic idea here. We'll zoom in and just make this a loop. See, now I've got the ju the jazz the jazz hustle flute in my head. <laughs> All right, we'll loop that one out like so. Tyrell needs to just chill a little bit here, doesn't he? Mm, we'll just make him even slower. If we add swing to this but still follow, I wonder what it's going to do. Let's try that again. Let's experiment. That's a little better. Yeah, as Phil says, you've got to swing it. And what we'll probably end up doing might even do a couple to here today. We might even play around with this to see what you can do with the basic uh, stuff. And then maybe we'll just go super experimental. Because I don't think this will take long to pull something together. Uh, let's, uh, what other instruments do you reckon we're going to use here? Well, I, I think some, uh, some clarinet. I think you've got to go with some uh, clarinet when it comes to a jazz little ditty like this. So we're going to come in here. Now, you've actually got a whole plethora <clears throat> you actually got a whole plethora of other instruments here under your keyboard, under your more sounds. And uh, if you go from the from the very start here, if you go to, so this is where your, your general instruments are. Make sure you're not in alchemy synth. Go back to your main categories and scroll on down to your other. Because you got all this business in here. You got all your basses and all your guitars and a whole bunch of uh, other things. But you've also got some, some kind of cool instruments that might work for this. So something like a clarinet could be kind of cool for this. Let's uh, have a look. All right, let's see if we can just bring in some like a clarinet sound uh, going on for this. So what I tend to do with something like this is I'm just going to try and find some motifs that might work in with the track. So we're going to record. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just going to hit record and uh, have a play. And obviously one of the challenges you have, once you start using a loop like that we've done at the start here, you do have to, uh, yeah, you do have to do some kind of kajiggering to get it in there. Um, I didn't like much of that, so I'm just going to undo that. I think I just need to... I think I just need to simplify this down. So I'm going to just try something like this in here. Be able to use a little bit of that in there. Let's just uh, find where we did that second run there. I reckon it was from here. So we'll uh, move that around there and see if we can just move this into here. Um, let's play guitar. <laughs> let's see if we can uh, play a little bit of... Let's play a little bit of guitar over the top of this one. And just have a little bit of a jam. Um, as we say when we do these sort of things, things won't always come the way you want them or the way you even have them in your head the very first time. And that's why we have home studios and home recording, because you can wipe the slate clean and try again if you don't like what you do. Uh, let's come in here and grab our amplifier. Now, we do have some pretty cool jazz kind of sounds here. In fact, there's one I reckon that's called the Cool Jazz Combo. That's literally just the uh, the old brown amp here, the old Fender amp. Sorry, the, the, the Garage Band Brownstone amp, isn't it? Is that what it has to be called? <laughs> for for uh for proprietary reasons so if we go in here we'll turn our monitoring on we will go to input dos and we should have All right, uh, we'll, we'll try something like this on here. I'm just going to turn up that guitar, like so, and give it a go. Might need a little bit of a tune on that guitar, because I think we've got some... Uh, we've got a sharp G string. You don't want a sharp G string. So we're gonna we're gonna go with sounds like blues. It might be because I'm uh, I'm playing. I've been listening to some BB King lately. Any BB King fans out there? I love me a bit of BB King. Um, but, uh, it, it, no, and John Lee Hooker. Yeah, there were some great ones. All righty. Yes, a sharp G string will cut right into you. Says Tremor Bear. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll throw the compressor on there as well. The G is twenty three cents flat. <laughs> <laughs> I calculated it. All right. 
<laughs> let's uh, let's play this. Try that again, because uh, I'm just getting my head around what I reckon it wants to sound like here. I'm just going to turn everything else down a wee bit so I can hear this guitar cut through the mix a little more. It would be terrible. Uh, I know like, I know, Omni Collective Creativity has... um has perfect pitch. I would hate to have perfect pitch just quietly. There would be nothing worse because so many people like me play out of tune so often that it would be absolutely annoying because you'd be like, oh my God, I could, all, all you'd hear, tell me, if, tell me if this is the case, but all you'd hear is um, people out of tune instruments. <laughs> I know it would annoy the crowd out of me. Try and do this. We may have got one decent pass in there somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, fun jazz fact: wrong notes don't exist. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Uh, I like that still, Ella. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, shift this down here. So we're gonna bring this little bit and go. And then bring the guitar in here just for a bit of fun. So I got the wrong guitar part because that was the bit that I did badly. I think it was the... I want the, the basic one that I did. Not that one. I've messed it all up now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to uh, delete it and try it again. Because <laughs> I think I've got out of whack here. All right. I'm just here. I'm hearing this little motif in my head, so... You know why I thought it was out of tune? Because I must have moved that clarinet that's uh, gone off the boot. Off the boot. Off the beaten track. Uh, oh, don't record. Stop. Oh, so, oh, it's because it looped. That's what the problem was. It's when I looped that clarinet. That's that's a, There's a bit of a trap for you there. It looped out, but because I had that little bit of extra room at the end there, it looped it a little bit there. All right. <laughs> yeah, you like the note clash. I know. It's it's accident. What is it called? Uh, happy little accidents that that, uh, that painting guy did. Yeah. Something like that. All right. Um... 
let's um let's add some brass. I'm, I'm having fun with this today. I've, I've decided that we're just going to go off. We're, we're going to run with it. We're going to grab the ball and we're going to run with it. Alrighty, let's uh, go back to our other instruments. Not external. We wanted our. Oh, it's under keyboard. More sounds. Other. Uh, what about a little uh, French horn? I know French horn is not a classical jazz instrument, but you know what? I'm not a classical jazz musician, <laughs> as has been made abundantly clear. <laughs> Alrighty, um, let's uh, let's uh, bring up the French horn and see what this sounds like. Again, we're just going to experiment and see what we find. That, um, with that middle chord, because the first chord is like a, yeah, that F sharp, is, it's interesting, isn't it? It kind of grates, but I'm not sure if it's, um, right there. You reckon a bassoon? Yeah, let's, let's change it out for a bassoon. I think you're right, Mark. Let's go with a bassoon instead, because you don't really want that brassiness here. Bassoon would be more of that jazz kind of feel. Let's have a look. I think it was down here we started. So we'll uh, we'll bring bring this all together. So if we start it with all that business, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, um, now we need to fix that first note, don't we? This is the problem again. When you when you have poor timing like me, you need to be able to edit your first note so that it actually plays in there. I haven't used MIDI in so long. It's good though. It's really good idea to get out of your comfort zone every now and then. Because uh, did I think this was ever going to go perfectly? No, but it doesn't matter. That's the thing. Like a lot of people get stressed out. They're like, oh, I wanted to do a thing, but it didn't work out. Doesn't matter. Just try again or live with it. It's not a problem. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people just get really anxious because they're like, I want it to be. It's not sounding like it is in my head. And you know what? It rarely does. Even when you get it right, sometimes it takes a diversion. And sometimes you, you start out trying a particular genre and it ends up something else. Is this jazz anymore? Not really. <laughs> does it matter? Nope. <laughs> You know what we could do? We could, um, that could be like an intro if we delete out these ones. That could be like an intro and then go into. All 
I'll just remove the doo doo doo. So then we've got just the, the base there. If we just remove everything else, what we can do, because remember we have the ability to add in the loops of just particular things. So if we delete this, so what we could do is bring back in just the keys. So if we go to the loops here, remember this was the uh, diamonds are forever or something like that. <laughs> the uh, da, 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 diamond jubilee. So we can bring in just like the keys. So we'll do that and we'll add those. We can just put them here on that same loop because it's just going to do a bit of this. That'll need to come down in volume. So we'll just use some clip gain on this one. Remember, you, you can use the volume over here, but if you've got part of a track that's louder than another, you can actually tap this one, hit the settings, and uh, you can drop the gain here. So if we drop this gain by like about 7-ish dB, it means it's going to reduce the volume. And what we can do, we can change up, let's change up Tyrell here, because we're going to try to add some vocals over the top of this one. Uh, do we want to trim? No, we want it to split. Split it good. All right, and let's um, tap this one. Hello, Cold Acre. How are you doing? I hope you are well. Um, so we'll move this up and just give it something a little bit different here. And maybe we even add a shaker just for a little bit of something different. <laughs> little bit of jam and easy listening 60s music there you go I, i'm taking that elevator music i'll go with that too i'll take anything maybe that can be next week <laughs> next week genre can be um uh can be elevator music will be one of the choices that we go with it wouldn't be one of these uh, little experimental dizzies if i didn't actually try to sing so why don't i try to sing <laughs> i need some water first and we need to think, find some uh, some fun lyrics I think jazz songs, uh, when they have vocals, which this one probably doesn't even need vocals, but something about moonlight. So let's just uh, sing sing about a little bit of uh, moonlight in people's eyes. Hello, Baba. Good evening to you, my friend. We're trying to <laughs> we're trying to create some jazz, but we're we're learning quickly that Pete doesn't know much about the genre. But that's all right. We're all here to learn. Ba ba ba. Check one two three. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Low bass vocals, yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, when I look into your eyes again. Something like that. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> Let's go with it. All right. Uh, we'll hit record and we'll just try something here. When I look into your precious eyes I feel a feeling It's such a surprise I just don't know what to do The feelings make me blue Until I'm back with you once again <laughs> Oh man this is becoming my favourite time of the week because um, usually your music live, but I don't know. There's something about there's something about the just the live music creation and trying something different. Uh, it just works works for me. When I look into your precious eyes, I feel a feeling. It's such a surprise. <laughs> I just don't know what to do The feelings make me blue Until I'm back with you once again And then we can, um, yeah, well, what we can do then is duplicate out one of those other sections and, like, go back into, like, an instrumental break. So uh, if we duplicate out, say, section B, where everything comes in, this is the cool thing about GarageBand. We can just duplicate that. And look what it does. It does all the splitting for you. 
Not many folks know that, but even if you haven't split that out, if you're using sections, see how it splits it all out and just brings it back in there? It's kind of genius. kind of works well. Uh, so let's uh, come back here and see what it will be like if we just play from this chorus section back into our uh, instrument. Till I'm back with you once again I don't know. <laughs> Pete and Jula Liet. Uh, Ch- Pete and Leela Duet. Yes, that could be interesting, couldn't it? Yeah, I think I'm harnessing my inner, inner Lou reality here today. Yeah, a little bit 60s, isn't it? A little bit 60s, a little bit rock and roll. It's definitely crooner-ish, isn't it? It's crooner more than jazz, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like it. Uh, so if we just, let's just play this from the start and we'll, um, we'll play around with this. I, I wasn't loving either the guitar. The bassoon's all right. We'll leave the bassoon in there. I don't think I did the guitar justice there, but we'll, uh, we'll grab the clarinet. We'll do a little bit of panning here. We'll just put the clarinet half left and the bassoon half right. Cause they kind of do different duties here. Um, and we'll, we'll play this through and we'll play a little intro here and see what it sounds like. Or maybe, maybe we even just have it like this and then we bring that bit in there. Let's try this. Experiment for the win. So many things we could try, couldn't we? We could do some do some harmonising, um, but uh, yeah, we might kind of pause there. I, I want to show a couple of other things because yeah, yeah, trying to trying to cookie cutter it around a loop is one way to do it, but you can obviously change it up and do whatever you want to. So um, l- let's save that one out because you know what I haven't done? Saved that at all for the entire time. I don't take my own advice when I do these, do I? So this was going to be GBW Giles. Thanks, by the way, uh, for everyone for being here and supporting. I know these ones are a bit weird. I really love them. Uh, if you don't or if you've got feedback uh, about the format of these, do let me know. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always so much fun. And I know you, you folks are probably getting frustrated because you're like, try all these theory things that I understand that you don't, Pete. And if I don't do them, I apologize. It's because I failed theory. My piano teacher's favorite thing to say to me was, Peter, you haven't done your theory. <laughs> it still echoes through my head. <laughs> all right. So um, by the way, what my I think the original version I did of this was actually better because I did a bit of a test run. I know, I cheat. But um I think it actually sounded better with this first one. It's more swingy, isn't it? Yeah, so I did totally cheat and um, came up with the basic idea beforehand. But that one's going away forever. Uh, Deleted. (laughs) It didn't leave. It hasn't deleted. Uh, So yeah, so the other things you've got, you've got other options here. So as Jade Star mentioned earlier... If you want to create your own interesting sound, in fact, let's uh, let's try um, let's just try something really way wacky and out there uh, in the last ten minutes that we've got here. Let's try and recreate a bit of a jazz standard. So um, we're going to go to the drums here. Now we can't use five four time, but there's a bit of a hack around this that means that we kind of can. So I'm going to do this here. So we'll just give ourselves a bunch of bars. Bunch of bars, not chocolate bars. Just give us 120 bars just to play with. And we want our tempo to be around this. 
184. Sounds like it's going to be. Which is actually like a, what, a 92. But we're going to go with that. So at the moment... That's a problem though, because it's not 4-4, four, four, it's we want it to be 5-4 time. So we're going to create our own metronome. So this is how we do this, and I'm going to do it really simple. So we're going to use... So we're just going to use that, and then create our own metronome so we can build a 5-4 track around it. That's enough. It's really hard to do because the metronome is telling you where the one is and you can't find where the five is. Uh, it's, it's a bit hard. But if we use uh, the power of quantization, so all we need is the first five beats of this to there, and then we can just loop this out. So we'll split that out there, get rid of this. And this is how you can create your own 5-4 track in GarageBand. You can do this for 7-8, you can do this for... 12, 16, that's not a key signature, time signature. Uh, but yeah, you just need to create five beats. So you can see here I've gone to two and a bit. So it won't, we can't use the grid anymore. We've taken a step away from the grid. But what we can do now is if we just loop this out, we now have, if we turn off this metronome, if we play it with the metronome, it'll do this. Doesn't work, does it? Yeah, so if we turn off the metronome though, so we've got that sound. It's probably going to be too fast, isn't it? And we'll definitely slow it down because Pete's not going to be able to play anything. No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't played. I haven't played any. So because I can't play Dave Brubeck, I'm going to uh, I'm going to scat Dave Brubeck. Not that yeah. Anyway, so um, boom, ding, ding, boom, 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 boom. let's just find a key. Um, so ding, 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 ding. actually, you know what? We'll we'll put in we'll put in the uh, the bass because we can put in just an upright bass, and we'll find we'll just play it in um, C minor here. We're just going to play it up to that point because we're super low on time. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing over the top of this. And I'm going to scan. And this is a good idea. Even if you're not trying to recreate something, I wonder if I get a copyright claim for this. This would be really interesting. If, if, if this, the show stops now, uh, you know that um, I've had to cut off the end. So thanks for being here, everyone. <laughs> because it may be. All right. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's do let's do some um a little bit of a trumpet sound for this one. Oh, this is the start. It's hard. It's hard when you're in five four time, isn't it? So that's our thing. So now we're going to uh, add another track here. I'm just going to duplicate that one out. And we're going to create our own very weird scat version of uh, Take 5.
It is fun though. I've got to tell you. Uh, so what have we got so far? <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so yeah but i just wanted to show you this because you can definitely jazz things up and uh, let's just see if we can improve upon this metronome let's see if uh, i can play drums because the cool thing about the drums here i don't need to do that i can just duplicate them out no i can't i've got to add a separate all right no i don't i can just do this tap and duplicate it so we can we can play some drums here on the uh, MIDI keyboard. All right, let's try and do it. Let's see if we can play some drums along with this. Oh God, <laughs> the lead-ins four times, this is gonna be hard. Man, oh man. So yeah, you can actually just bring in and, and create if you're playing along by yourself. A tip for drummers, it'll put quantization on by default. If you're trying to play a free-formed drum, uh, then uh, you turn that off. So if you've got that there, you need to go into your track settings, up the top here, track settings, quantization, none, and go with that. And then... Set of Muppet vibes because it's kind of like it's a little bit like um like uh like the manamana do 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 manamana do 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 I think because I'm doing the things going on there uh it'll be interesting what do you reckon what what's the chances that this is going to get a copyright claim I don't I don't know I don't think so but it's a very famous melody. I don't know if I did it just. I've got no idea if I played it in anywhere near the right key. Probably not. But, um, yeah, we've had fun. Uh, it's music that sounds like... Oh, Synthwave. Yeah. Well, that's what we've got to do. So, um, <laughs> what, what would you give me? I, I'd give myself a 6 out of 10. Uh, and 5 of that is probably for just the, the, the guts to actually try it uh, and create some jazz. Uh, but, um, yeah, look, it's, it's fun. It's fun to try things and to learn as you go and let a couple of things out of this one um i learned that it's really hard to build around a, a a loop but it's a good way to get a start so i think what i would do with this other track that we created the actual jaws track that we put here is because it was built around this original loop that was cool but then i built out my track with it But what I could do then, once you get to this stage, you can actually mute out that track and then... And then you've got your own track there. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't quite swing enough, does it? Let's just uh, put some really heavy swing on here and see if this is going to improve this. Not really. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot going on and a lot that you can do here in GarageBand to just play around, experiment, have fun and enjoy. And you'll come away with a few ideas. Like I kind of like the motif. the duh, 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 duh. And this may not be for this song and it may not even be in this genre. It may be something that I use in a singer-songwriter folksy song that I do in my usual style. 
but I wouldn't have found that. Like this, you know what I mean? The serendipity of just trying something new means that you can actually find new things that you wouldn't find if you just do that. If I just grabbed an acoustic guitar and started plonking away in G major like I do every other day, I'm not going to be finding the same sort of things that I do here. So I hope you uh, enjoyed or uh, had a bit of a chuckle at John's, playing some Jaws. Have a quick drink. Uh, while I'm having this drink, what I need you to do now is we need we need five genres to put into the poll for next week. So think out of the box, throw them out there. If I haven't heard of them, I might have to ask you what they are, but uh, let me know what you think. While I cough and drink. Because so far, just to give you an idea, if you're just catching up, we have done metal, we have done punk, and we have done jazz. So uh, two four-letter words and one five-letter word. And again, I've, I've learned a lot from each one. The punk one was fun. I played it to my wife last night, and she's like, that's not very punk. You need to be more yelly. And I'm like, oh, it's more pop punk. It's more Blink-182 pop punk style. Um, so yeah, maybe we could do some more, like, maybe it needs to be a bit more specific, like 70s punk. I need to be like, God shave our queen. That's not how that song goes, Pete. Um, like some Clash style or some uh, something like that. Um, but yeah, so we've done punk, we've done metal, which I, again, I tried, I tried hard. <laughs> we got some decent metal tones. Um, but now we need some more, uh, we need some more. We've got synth waivers in there and we've got rockabilly. And look, we have had those in before, which is fine. We can definitely add stuff in. So I'm just going to bring up my, uh, bring up my community tab here and we're going to throw some genres in here. So we're going to go with a poll, and I was going, what genre of music should I create in next week's GarageBand Weekly? I'll put my little icon there. Oops, you can't see any of that. Let's show you my screen so you can see what I mean. Uh, we'll come here, and we'll put a little guitar there, because icons and emojis, man, it's what the kids want. So we are going to put some, uh, some synth wave, because that has been suggested and didn't quite get up <coughs> and I like the idea of rockabilly because um we can play some fun techno says Russ oh we got we got to put techno in for Russ that could be interesting I might need a lesson mate if you if you thought it was embarrassing watching me try and make metal or jazz wait till you try and watch me uh, do techno that could be interesting <coughs> use a vocoder I don't have a vocoder um F sharp major synth wave. Yeah, sure. Um, but, but point, pointillism, 12 tone sharp note. Uh, um, Gesundheit? Uh, are any of those genres that I should know? Point, pointillism. I'd have to, I'd have to, um, I'd have to research them, Bubba. <laughs> Hello, Sion. Thanks for dropping on by. Got any genres? Cinematic rock sounds like fun. All right, we're going to add cinematic rock while I cough again. Sin, not Viner, Cinematic Rock is going in the list, Techno Pete. This Pete is Technotronic. This Pete is Technotronic. <laughs> Cinnamon Rock, that would be different. Uh, Chase to Rockabilly, there you go. Down Tempo Hillbilly Rap. <laughs> Baroque. Oh, now there's something. I'm going to go with it. Should we just go, oh, do we go Baroque or do we go like classical in general? Do something classical. Because I don't know that. Uh, I think maybe just Baroque. Maybe I should do a genre where you just take a MIDI file, import it into GarageBand, change the instruments and release it. What do you reckon? Let's go with that. MIDI. <laughs> that could be the... <laughs> That could be it. But I like Baroque. I'm going to have to start studying up on my um on my thing. Uh, on my future house would be cool. Uh, but we've, we've, we've filled it up, Sion. Future house will uh, will we'll hold off for, for next week. Um, uh, you don't want to go... Uh, no, I, I definitely don't want to. Oh, beatbox. Now, that would be fun. This is a story all about how. Maybe not. So we've got... um. We've got a choral music. This could be. Oh, there's so many cool genres, but we're going to keep doing this for a few weeks. So we'll um, we'll we'll go with those for now. So we've got synth wave, rockabilly, techno, cinematic rock, and baroque. So I'm going to have to um, I'm going to have to talk to Russ if I get techno. I'm going to have to get um, our friend oh, blanking on names today. And uh, da, da, who's the dude that does the vertical cinematic rock? We play him all the time. Oh my goodness. 
You know when you're getting old and you, you can't fit? Marcus Cannell. Gosh. Brr. Yeah, so Marcus Cannell for some cinematic rock and uh, synth wave. A lot of people creating synth wave, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll throw it out there. 8-bit choral music could be interesting. Oh, yeah, there you go. Beatboxing and throat singing together. I can't, I, I can't do that. With the singing bowls. Ooh, chip tune would be cool. Hello, vegan meat lovers pizza. Oh, wow. I've had a vegan meat lovers pizza before. I actually don't mind the vegan meat. It's getting it's getting better. I know, I know. People people will tell me, no, it's not real meat. It's not real good. But um, it's definitely better. As someone who's been vego for like nearly 10 years, it wasn't good. It was absolutely terrible 10 years ago. Now, barely tell the difference. I go have a Beyond Burger. Tastes just like a beef burger. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's, I need. And I've had two coffees too. I couldn't do that. Uh, Marcus Cannell. That's right. The king of cinematic rock, Marcus Cannell. Um, yeah, Alchemy Synths has some cool 8-bit music. Absolutely. All right, we're going to hit the, we're going to hit the post button here on this one. And then, uh, folks can jump on in and start doing it. I'll put a link to the community tab here, right here in the chat. So whether you're watching on YouTube or the, uh, Facebooks or wherever you are, you can, uh, you can jump in and vote on the next time around that we do. So, uh, to finish up here, let's, uh, let's jump back over. So uh, we've, we've got some interesting stuff here. So if you're just catching up and you, you want to join in the fun, the last two episodes you can go back and uh, catch up on. We did some <laughs> we did some embarrassing metal last week, which uh, I don't know. It's, I, I'm, I'm going to stop saying embarrassing. It's like when you say, um, "Oh, it's a it's a guilty pleasure." I'm like there's nothing to be guilty about it. I'm just I'm just I'm doing my best. It's all good. Um, so we we created this little sound here in Grass. <laughs> Yeah. You're ready to rock. So that was our metal effort from last week. And the week before, we did a little bit of punk. So uh, we had some punk sounds. Of course, Anders on drums sounded like this. And then today, what did we do? Well, we attempted to make something a little jazzy. And did we get there? Well, you be the judge. When I look into your precious eyes so yeah, I think I'll be listening to too much Buble, and I think I think that Michael Buble is jazz now, <laughs> because that sounded a bit like a Harry Connick Jr. or a Buble track. Uh, yeah, so the community tab, you do need 1,000 subs for a community tab. They have opened it up for some folks. Weirdly, gaming channels, if you're part of YouTube Gaming, they gave them community tabs before they reached 1,000 subscribers, but I think if you're a normal person, as opposed to a gamer, you do need it uh, at 1,000. But yeah, Sion says here, sometimes they just randomly open things up for whatever reason. Uh, thank you, Bubba. Uh, thanks for, for dropping on. Yeah, if you had some fun here today, feel free to uh, to throw some thumb love. Put a thumbs up in the chat because uh, it does help out. It tells the YouTube robots to tell the other YouTube robots to go and uh, tell other people to come and watch the show. Now, I reckon we probably got, because it is a, uh, a Tuesday morning here, which means it's a Monday evening for many of you. Do we have some Rock and Ronnie Ward coming up? I usually give Ronnie a little bit of a nudge here. Yeah, we do. Look, he's uh, he's live in just 50 minutes' time with his master list. Hang on. With his master list. Yeah. Uh, so you can go and check out. Oh, a live set. So Speaking of the 60s, look at that. We've got Rockin' Ronnie Ward with a live set, Songs from the 60s, a variety of live songs, or it could be live songs, and the master list. There you go. Very cool. So go and, uh, if you thought that my song sounded more like a ballad from the 60s than it did anything jazz related, then go and uh, check out Rockin' Ronnie Ward. You'll probably enjoy it as well. Uh, community tab changed to, maybe it has. It was definitely a thousand back in the day, but maybe it is only a hundred. 
we're, we're crowdsourcing it here at the moment to see. Uh, Brad says, I think I have the community tab and I only have around 300. I think I got it with the music. Oh, yeah. Yes, you do get it if you if you apply to change your channel to an artist page. Look, we've got a bit of time here, so I'm happy to answer this. By the way, if you've got any other questions, i got nowhere to be, so I've got another five or ten. So if anyone has any other questions. But if you are a distro kid, so you can apply for a YouTube artist page once you hit a thousand subscribers. But if you release music through DistroKid, they've actually got an option for you. And just ask Gary Hubs about how quick it is, but it does work eventually. Uh, sometimes has a few hurdles. If you go to the goodies section here and you go to, I think it's Enhance Your Music. No, where is it? Must be under Special Access. Yeah, there is. So you can, uh, right there, official YouTube official artist channel. And as you can see, it's in beta, beta, because it uh, doesn't work as well all the time. But if you click on that one, it'll take you in here. And you can actually use this. So you, if you've got an artist name, so for me, if I wanted my, if I say I created a righty dokey artist, uh, righty dokey specific YouTube channel, and I wanted to release like lyric videos and other things on there, I could then select this and get ba uh, bad lab get DistroKid to ask YouTube to turn it into an artist page. And then you get the the little artist logo. So if you're wondering what that looks like, if you go to who's someone who's an artist, well, Brad Example is a good example. <laughs> Brad Example. So he's got the little note next to his name there. That means he's got an artist page. And as you can see, he does have the community tab where he's, uh, look, I'll come here and I'll like everything. I'll like everything. <laughs> so yeah, so you can use the community tab to share links, you can share photos, you can share polls like I've done there, and as you can see there from Bradley's example, uh, see what I did? Uh, then you can actually do that. So if you've got a DistroKid account, go to your goodies, go to special access, click on YouTube official artist channel, go through the application process, and that's how you get it. Yeah, there you go. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. It is uh, Ron Ward from Homegrown Indie Live who's coming up in just uh, 50 minutes time. So jump on over to Rock and Ronnie Ward. Ron, you have to go into your settings and make me able to dump because um, even though it's not for a while, uh, yeah, like I do with Jade and with Thomas, if you go to your settings, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that offline, but that means I can send people straight over to that. Uh, no, Righty Doki is not my typical. I've only released one, maybe two songs under my Righty Doki name. I really just used it as a, a way to show you how to use your second artist with DistroKid. So there you go. Uh, all right. Well, I think we've come to an end. If there's no other... Uh, there's no other oh, yeah. If you haven't had the new user interface overhaul, I think some people get the... They're doing a soft release. Like most things, it doesn't look great. I'll show you because I've got the new look here. and I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's gone out to everyone yet. But when you're watching a YouTube video, let's watch a Jade Star video because I didn't catch all of Jade's from earlier. So if I want to go back and watch Jade's... Oh, no, now I can't find it. Uh, we'll go back to this one. So, yeah, you've got a very different user interface now from what we had before. And I don't know if it's changing even more, but it's got these, let's see, these buttons. Like, they've got these rounded buttons that you can do here. So, when you're subscribing and unsubscribing. So, it's a very different layout. On the mobile one, it's not as different. But I've noticed that on some layouts, it does weird things like puts your chat down below. Um, you've For a while now, you've had to go for your description you've had to hit the show more button to show all the stuff there. And that was kind of hidden before and it's still a little bit hidden. Like it's not super obvious. When I say go to the description to check out the links, you come here and you're like, there are no links in the description. You're going to hit the show more. But I think, yeah, that they've improved it now that if you click anywhere on that, so you used to have a little blue button down the bottom, but now even if I click on like the views here, it'll open up everything there. So that's probably an improvement in my opinion. Um, and you've got the thanks button there too. Go, go give Jay's Star some thanks. Um, so yeah, so it's, there, there are definitely some differences over on the YouTube interface. Um, yeah, for better or worse, uh, Jay says for much better. I think a lot of the changes are better. I don't love the bubbles, he says, even though my bubbles that I use on here, but um, yeah, it's it, it's fine. I think it's going to be better. They What they need to do is improve the mobile experience because um, YouTube Mobile, and then especially the YouTube Creator Studio on mobile, is uh, not good. It's not fun. It's not fun times. So um, there you go. 
All right. Uh, that is going to do it. We're going to finish off there. But thank you, everyone. Don't forget, you can jump over and vote right now on the poll to see what genre we attempt next week. Uh, but that's me done for the week. Uh, I've got a few other little tutorial videos and things coming out in the next couple of days. But then we will be back later in the week. We've got uh, the happy hour, of course. We've got your music live. And then GarageBand Weekly again next week as well. That is going to do it for now. Thanks for being here, as we say at the end of every show. Well, number one, hit the like button if you had some fun today. But what we do like to say is be kind to yourself this week. It's really important. You know, can't be kind to others if you're not kind to yourself. Then you can be kind to others. Make sure you look out for people and uh, support people. Build people up. Don't tear them down. And uh, keep creating music, folks. And I'll see you next time here on Garage Band Weekly. Bye.